Good evening. You are listening to a rad legend broadcasting. That's me. Premier podcast TV party tonight. And I am said Rattledge, your host. And tonight, our favorite show is Homicide, Life on the Street, Season 6, brought to you by the man, the myth, the legend, David Simon. We are on the road through all of David Simon's great works. We're calling it From the Corner to the Deuce. These are all the shows that he had a major hand in as an executive producer, writer, director, best boy, gaff, caterer, all of it. It was all David Simon all the time. (laughs) This is our second episode, and I'd like to apologize for the first time we did this. Uh, I was having a nervous breakdown. My son was flooding the toilet. There were no plungers in the house. It was dark out, and there were wolves after me. But I want to bring on the man, the myth, the legend. Some people know him as Dick Titten or the the submissive Brad, but I just call him the love of my life (laughs) and the man (laughs) who held it down a month ago when I uh, could not keep it together. Ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, Jesse Starcher, how do you do, sir? Uh, Mark Rattle, it's good to be back talking some homicide life on the street. Season six, man. Season mm-hmm. six, we're on our way, just like you said, down the road, down the path. Uh, yeah, man, last last month, with the, uh, we got through it. We made it through. People know what happened. If not, I got a little recap here, not of our podcast, because that was a train <laughs> yeah, Please wreck, don't but... recap the podcast. <laughs> but uh, I got a little the podcast went like this. Be right back, Jesse. I'm back, Jesse. Be right back, Jesse. <laughs> plunge, plunge, plunge. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's all good. It's all good. We all have those days sometimes. So, But yeah, Indeed. man, glad to be back. We're, we're, we're working on this passion project, getting uh, getting our second full episode in here season six so um i mean look i know i'll be driving the train today we got to be honest with our listeners mark radlich he's had he's had his uh uh you know let's just say he's got some episodes in he doesn't have the whole all of them so some of the stuff may be a surprise to him that's been this whole week like sean didn't get get all the movies watched i couldn't get all of homicide watched it's 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 been a, um, a big chunk too, man. You're talking yeah. like 23 episodes, 45 minutes a piece. I mean, Hang on, I'm going to say something with you real quick. So, right. so you know, whenever you go off screen, there's like an avatar that comes up. Here, I just changed mine because for a while, I think everyone was using Eric's Dr. Manhattan one. This okay. is mine. You ready? Ah, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> you like that, right? Ah, <laughs> Make it give care, me Spider-Man. <laughs> Make it care. <laughs> make it gear oh i can see it there yeah, yeah all right. it just on. has a little see, circle outline i don't know if you can right. see that or not but yeah yeah it, I, I i pulled that from somewhere of, of the j jonah jameson the thing saying make it gay or like i need that as i need that as an avatar yeah that's beautiful all right back to me back to homicide yes um we watched all of the first season and um we got around to this one and it's funny because i was actually having a conversation with my lovely wife yesterday about you know, she goes to me, she's like, you know, it was never the podcasting. The podcasting was only about an hour you know, or two, usually when I was sleeping. It was the having to watch 30 hours of television it's to prepare for a week of podcasting. And I was right, like, dude, I, I get it. So um, I this conversation came up um, last night when jo- when Robert and I were talking Firestarter, uh, the new one, because I because we were kind of going over the same information, how hard it is to do weekly television reviews. Mm-hmm. And to do multiple reviews, like I was doing, I think back in November, where I think I scheduled like three TV reviews all in one week. Like <laughs> I, I, when do I have time for this? Wow. Yeah. I, so one one a week is probably enough, and then eventually just there'll be none because I I can't do this anymore. It's easier to watch a couple of movies, listen to an album while I'm working out, and be prepared and refreshed for this. It is not easy to do multiple series of television watches yeah. every single week. Yeah. I mean, dude, look. I, you know me, I, I probably left my house. There was a point where I left my house one time in a week. I've been <laughs> at the house the whole week. 
And right. all I did was sit there with my wife, you know, I'd get off mm-hmm. of work, go upstairs, watch Homicide. So mm-hmm. uh, we would throw in three or four episodes and sometimes on a weekend we could we were really invested in this show. We really liked it. We, I've mm-hmm. already got, you know, I've told you, I've already I've already watched all three seasons that we're covering, plus the mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> I'm okay. already so. Yep. But uh, but yeah, well, season six, man, I've got, I got notes. We're ready to go. Well, you know what, Jesse? Tell me. This is your fucking show, man. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is your show, baby. I won't shy away from the camera like some people. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not brat taming you. <laughs> Don't okay? brat tame me. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. No, well, um, I did. I watched the first two episodes and I watched the last two episodes. So I am prepared to talk about that. And I do have some thoughts, but this okay. is your show. So okay. hit me. Hit me, baby. One more time. Let's start with a recap. OK, let's uh, uh, recapping season five. I got Everybody my... tried to kill themselves in the season five. <laughs> <laughs> so okay detective frank pimbleton uh you know in that his arc in that season he was recovering from his stroke uh trying to get back a- into his job trying to get back on the streets uh just to do what comes naturally to him there was a bit of a struggle he's able to do that however uh i think him and his wife separate uh near mm-hmm. it's either in the middle of the season or uh but by the end she's coming back OK, uh, we also have the personal journey of Detective Tim Bayless, which does not cease uh, mm-hmm. this. You know, this season also shines a light on his uh, personal journey. Like I said, uh, he's definitely struggling with the trauma last season of being abused by his uncle uh, when he was a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we find out he goes to get take care of him uh which was inter- it was a pow- powerful powerful episode uh but obviously the main uh, the main meat of what's going on in the homicide unit is detective mike kellerman and his uh let's just say he struggled to clear his name mm-hmm. as a man who was not on the take in his arson division prior to coming to the homicide unit. Uh, mm-hmm. Now that mental anguish almost led him to suicide. So he about kills himself. Meldrick, his Meldrick Lewis, his partner talks him out of it uh, near the end of the season. We're all thinking everything's good with Kellerman until there's a chase involving Luther Mahoney who ends up going up into like a penthouse or something. Mm-hmm. Lewis follows him up there uh, and there's a struggle. Then Mahoney grabs a gun. He's got it pointed at Lewis and Kellerman and Stiver show up. And just as Luther puts his gun down to surrender, Kellerman blows him away. And right Which... there in front of Lewis, right there in front of uh, Stivers. Mm-hmm. And, and so, they're dealing with this in the season finale of episode, of uh, season six. Of uh, season five? Well, no. Or no this comes no, back you're again. Right, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Season five, Munch is just munching. I mean, that, that guy is, that's all he did in season yeah, five. He's like, so. he's like the watcher. <laughs> he is too. <laughs> he's got these great quips mm-hmm. that he busts out every once in a while, these bits of wisdom. It's uh, so funny because yeah. it's like the homicide life on the street is very reminiscent of Law and Order, um, except that Law and Order focuses on a set of detectives, whereas homicide is the entire homicide unit. Right. And so they flit around between each set of partners. Um, and then there's like a central drama per episode and sort of a running thread through the entire season. That's the structure of the show. And and everything with Munch, there's never any personal drama. No, it's always it's, it's whenever rare. they cut to him, it is just hard nose. What case are they working now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And him complaining about having to work. <laughs> or yes. There's some kind of government conspiracy. Uh, yes, Because yeah. he's not really a character. It's just Richard Belzer. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah, the season finale of, of season five. Uh, saw the squad look into the death of former detective Bo Felton. And we also got an introduction to detective Paul Falzone and mm-hmm. detective Stu Gardy. Uh, so in the five final moments of the finale of season five, Lieutenant Giardello comes out and he says, Oh my goodness, everybody. Hey, be ready. They're going to rotate us. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, they are the, the squad's kind of like left in limbo as to like who's going to be there because they're going to rotate these guys out into like robbery, sexual crimes, mm-hmm. things like that. So they, you know, the homicide unit may not be what it was when we leave when we head into season six, which it isn't. <laughs> the, fully. the homicide unit's being mothballed. We're just going to let people kill kill, kill <laughs> each other. It's fine. We, the homicide unit is so corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> we can't even have one anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so Detective Kay Howard, uh, we saw her in all the, you mm-hmm. know, in the season five, she's gone. And J.H. Brody, the documentarian, gone. Mm-hmm. So those are the, the two casualties, I'd say, after the end of season five. 
Uh, but that's kind of a recap of where we're going to start things in season six. So, so, so season six brings us new cast member Callie Thorne, of which mm, I say, mm, my goodness, she mm-hmm. is. I had to, I had to confess <laughs> to my wife that I had your hall pass. I had a huge crush on her. I from, don't know from where though, because because she's from she's Homicide in, Life on the Street, sir. Are you shitting me? Seriously, I am so not that, that far you. back? Because the first time. The first time I ran afoul of the um, God's perfect woman, Callie Thorne, I used to say God's perfect woman was Selma Hayek, but then oh, I get accused of pretty, hating my own God. race. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, <laughs> what do you got? You got a fetish for Hispanic women? Mm-hmm. No, she's just mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the most perfect white woman, Callie Thorne just amazing yeah yeah she's uh there is a i don't even know if i have this in my notes but i was that i've got for tonight <laughs> your notes I, read <laughs> my, my 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 notes as i am going through this uh uh th- through the seasons i'm just taking like scattered notes all episode mm-hmm. and i have like five or six notes but one i remember specifically going over one i was cultivating through these things that said you know lieutenant or uh, lieutenant detective ballard had her hat on backwards oh my gosh just <laughs> hottest thing ever but uh yes yes uh L- laura ballard detective laura ballard shows up here and we open up season six you said you watched the first two episodes g is like oh yeah there you go <laughs> i've already I'm, done this search. i'm leaving okay? this I, I on know the this, screen <laughs> i know this google page actually because i was looking at it <laughs> earlier <laughs> jesse has that shit bookmarked <laughs> yes sir yes, what are you sir. doing in the she, basement nothing why are you bringing the lotion <laughs> shut up i'm just trying to find all the episodes of necessary roughness i don't that's know right. which, she was on five. that too that's so, exactly right hang on um, i gotta so for tiktok purposes we have to talk about callie thorne for just a moment okay um so callie I'm just leaving this up. Oh, uh, Callie. Uh, <laughs> Please first do. time I saw Callie Thorne was on The Wire. I okay. know you've gotten past the like. I think you're in like season three, aren't you, of The Wire? Well, I'm in season. I'm in season four. I cannot oh, remember where she was though. Okay, so do you remember? And I can't remember which season. Might have been the first season. Might have been a little bit later. But they're like halfway into reconciling, and they're like banging on the chair. Oh wow! Do you so, do, do you not remember this? Like her I'm and McNulty? Not, no. No, is she is she dating McNulty? Okay, so he's trying to reconcile with her. This might have been this might have been season four. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look this up. Okay, I, yeah, because I, I do not remember. Make her. sure you're not wearing pants when you do. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say it's season four because I feel like he um I feel like after the whole thing with Stringer, and we'll talk more about this in a couple of months when we actually get to The Wire um, on the road through Dave and Simon's great works. But <laughs> I feel like he uh, he had at the end of season three, he decided to become a beat cop again. He he left he left the homicide unit, so okay. he's he's on the street, and I think while he's on the street, he's deciding that he you know he's good, he's cleaned up, he's not drinking anymore, and I think he wants to reconcile with his wife. And so Callie's his ex, Callie's his wife. Yeah, you didn't know oh, that. I, mean, I do not remember. Go this, back and man. watch season one. I mean, she's kind of twatty, but why she's would I? Still why Callie would Thorne. I not remember this? Yeah, this like, something that's why. That like, why, like, like oh. if you're if you're this far into the wire, how did you not know any of this? Right, man. I'm I, well, I, again. I'm going to go back through and watch. So I will be absolutely singing her praises once again when we do season one. <laughs> Wait, uh, did you rewatch The Wire? Just the Callie Thorne scenes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to brush up on that before I talked about it. Um, so anyway, so so like they end up having like sex on like a folding chair. Nice. Hot. H-A-W-T. Uh, you know, I, I'd show you my notes and that's written right in there. H-A-W-T. <laughs> I am Hot. not lying, sir. <laughs> I am not lying to you. Yeah, Callie. So Callie Thorne was in that, and then she had a much bigger role uh, in um, Rescue Me. She okay. She, had, she was opposite Dennis Leary, and then Dennis Leary. And I think she, I feel like Callie Thorne is Dennis Leary's like work wife because like okay. she ended up being a bu- in a bunch of different things. Um, the next thing she was in was I believe Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. All right, where she plays the daughter's mom. If I remember correctly, Um, and then you know what? It'd be just easier if I looked up her IMDb. Uh, (laughs) I love how you're not having to for most of this. (laughs) (laughs) Is it weird that I have posters of her on the wall? (laughs) 
<laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so she's in NCIS New Orleans, which we're going to have to now review. Um, <laughs> she's in uh, the mysteries. Or... She's is. in the mysteries of Laura, which we're going to now have to review. Okay. Um, oh see. boy, it's it's turned into a real passion project for me then passion <laughs> yeah, for yeah when we're Callie done with Thorne. david simon we're doing the, the we're, we're doing the uh extended the works of Callie thorn <laughs> the, the extended yes <laughs> from one boob to the other the extended <laughs> works of Callie thorn <laughs> that's the name nice <laughs> um anywho uh she was in da, 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 law and order special victims unit okay. um i've already mentioned i mean she's in like so she's got in a eight probably got a bunch of bit parts here. Yeah, recently. she's in like an episode here or there of just about everything. Yeah. She had a reoccurring role in Prison Break, which we're going to now have to review. <laughs> Remember when I said I was done with television? <laughs> and then right. Callie Thorne came along. <laughs> and King stole my heart. Yes, she is a beautiful woman. I mean, and, and I, I, like I said, I had to confess to Mindy. I was like, I've had, a, I've had a crush on her since we first saw her. That you know, this is '97, mm -hmm. I think, when this season drops. So, uh, you know, anyway, you know, Laura Ballard, Detective Laura Ballard shows mm -hmm. up uh, and she's not only putting a smile on my face, but she's also closing cases, apparently. And mm -hmm. G is like, I've never, G smiles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Giardello, when he smiles, it's unsettling. And when <laughs> you first come into this episode, like he is all smiles because there, mm -hmm. there's so much black on the board. All these. Yes. I remember that solved. scene. He's, yeah. he's so, he's so impressed with everything. The, so we're talking about Callie Thorne and, her, and the one thing that starts early on, and, and then I think maybe you can tell me a little bit more as the season progresses, because I don't know. I just saw the one one episode is how much Pendleton is already just done with her. Oh, yeah. like she, she hasn't even been there a day. And he's like, I don't trust you. And here's the thing, because we talked about Pendleton and the stroke and how he starts off season five. By the time it ends, he's more or less normal. Season six, it's like he never had the stroke at all. Right. He is just all like juking and jiving and carrying on, and I am a badass mofo. Oh, yeah. And like Callie Thorne's like, I have ideas on how to solve cases. And he's like, fuck your ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode by episode three. So, I this is the, the first three episodes of this season center around James Earl Jones and his family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's yeah. a there's a uh, murder that happens. So, uh, at the end of that. That's where at the end of that trilogy, Pimbleton and Ballard kind of bury the hatchet because Pimbleton mm -hmm. starts to realize that his instincts were wrong in this situation. And they kind of make peace because Ballard mm -hmm. was kind of, hey, you know, let's look at it this way. Look, this this person and and Pimbleton wouldn't have any of any of what she was suggesting. And it turns mm -hmm. out, you know, she was right. So yeah, they're they're definitely at odds in the first three episodes, uh, but they start to get along towards uh, towards the end of that first three. Okay. Uh, so okay, all right. Let's let me talk about the like I said, setup for season six. That first episode, the way that that rolls out, basically the the whole rotation thing happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, we open it up, and Bayless and Pimberton have been like reassigned back to the homicide unit from uh, like robbery or something. I can't remember. Right. Yeah. Giardello, like I said, hot, happy man, new detectives in his unit. Uh, Paul Falzone sticking around. Detective Stu Gardy sticking around and Laura, detective Laura Ballard are sticking around. Uh, Ballard and Gardy are a lot of times what you see throughout the season paired up. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two are partners most of the time. You said that, that second one that he's the judge. He's Fallon from um, Judge Fallon from The Wire, right? Right. See, I don't remember. The elder white fella. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. With the curly was, hair. I don't recall File Zone being in uh, The Wire. So no, 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 no. no. Judge Fallon. Yeah. No, I'm saying Detective Falzone's uh, John Seda. The guy okay. who plays him is not in The Wire from what I understand. Yes, but yeah. Yes. Stu Garrity, uh, which I think his name's. Oh, boy. I want to say Peter Garrity. I, I I could be wrong. I don't have the actor's name in front of me. But it's funny how okay. his name is Stuart Garrity. Okay, so yes, Stuart Garrity, played by Peter Garrity, yeah. and that he and he's Judge Fallon on the Wire. Got it. Okay. All right. So yeah, they those two Ballard and Garrity are paired up, and it, it's it's an interesting dynamic because. Gardy kind of likes her, you know, a little bit, mm -hmm. but he knows he doesn't have a chance because he's just an old fat slob <laughs> Irish guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a hundred. <laughs> so he kind of he kind of takes like a fatherly role. Right. Um, and, uh, I, you know, what I'll do here real quick. I mean, it, 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 I've got the main plot threads here. Uh, the the 
I'll talk about like Falzone's big arc really mm-hmm. is just uh, him dealing with the custody of his boy. Okay. So he's got a, he's got a young son uh, who his wife has full custody of his son and he's wanting to try and get that custody back. So we follow a lot of the season uh, is him trying to deal with that. Um, there are by episode 19, Detective Falzone and Laura Ballard, who was pretty interested, I think, in oh my goodness, I want to say Bayla Bayless. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, Ballard and Falzone start kind of having sparks. So there's going to be possibly a relationship there. Uh, you start to kind of see that as the season comes to an end. Detective Stu Garrity, I already talked about most of what's going on with him. Like I said, he's he's just kind of trying to find his way. He does, he is a war veteran, which I think gets more explored in season seven. But uh, he's he's definitely got some history. It's interesting to see him on the homicide unit. He's uh, He's been known as like, I think when we first see him in the last episodes of season five, they were talking about how he was kind of a coward. Mm-hmm. And that gets explored a little bit. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There, okay. So Detective Laura Ballard, real quick on her. She's from Seattle. H-A-W-T. I already said that. Single. Looking for love. Um, she's cautious. And there's a couple episodes that, you know, she's... <sighs> I remember the first time I ever heard of it. You ever heard of the term Saturday night, hun? Sure. Okay. I've never heard of that. And there was an episode completely all about Saturday night huns. And of course, uh, women who are going out on the town and the preconception <laughs> women of, of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, she's, she takes more of a, um, oh my goodness, a, a very, kind of feminist forward role you know it's one of those mm-hmm. things where she's she's kind of on her own she, you're the story writing around her is showing you what it's like to be a single woman in a big town like this and on the homicide unit uh and that actually gets uh ex- expanded more with a couple other characters as we get into season seven but anyway uh there is a one episode that stood out to me where she gets herself tested for aids and if you remember you know back then that was a that was a big mm-hmm. deal in the nineties, dude. Yeah. Um, sure. very big deal. So, uh, the departure of medical examiner, Juliana Cox. Yeah. She's hot too. Yes. Um, she is. is my contribution <laughs> to this podcast. And <laughs> I was sad that she was off the cast. Not me. Let me, l- l- let me not be completely chauvinistic. Let's, sure. Try <laughs> your best. Completely. I'm going try to your best <laughs> level best. Um, no, she's, she, she's the, the actress who played that character. Very, you know, I think she did a great job in mm-hmm. season five. Right. And I liked her sexual chemistry with what's his nuts. Um, the, the uh, one, Kellerman. Kellerman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought they had good on screen chemistry. I thought she played the role very well. And she, yeah, she's in a, she's a very attractive woman as women tend to be in, you know, television. Right. So um, she was a great addition to the cast and I always enjoyed her scenes. So when she's not in this season, I was really bummed. Yeah. By the way, what yeah. happened to what's, what's the other one? Melissa Leo. Well, I, I will tell back. So she no, she's gone. You won't see her in season seven. You will, however, see her in Homicide the movie. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, she's she's gone. And from what I understand, she's re- she's just basically reassigned. So okay. she's working in a different department. Gotcha. Um, so the reason why Juliana has to leave, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff that went on with her in the season when we talk about Bayless, mm-hmm. but um she ends up getting into a disagreement with her boss so the state wants the there there's this drunk driver that ended up killing somebody and the state Mm -hmm. comes in and says hey why don't you i noticed that the like the alcohol level on this guy was just like 0.1 below why don't you retest it maybe it needs to go up because if it's a drunk if he gets classified as being intoxicated like the state won't be liable so she mm-hmm. runs the test like two or three times, comes up the same, but the, her boss is pushing her like, hey, you need to change this. And she decides not to and promptly gets fired. And that's right. it. She's gone. Okay. Um, that happens in season or the episode uh, 14, episode 14. Hey, I want to jump in just real quick. So um, he was a, David Simon was a story editor on season five, season six and season seven. He's actually just listed as producer. OK. All right. All right. So he's involved. He's. Yep. OK. That's so, all right. Oh, he also uh, looks like he wrote or had a writing credit 
for Blood Ties Part 2 and Part 3, Full Court Press, and Finnegan's Wake. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I remember a few of those episodes. Yeah. I'd have to look. at They didn't fall on my top three, though, but okay. we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, okay. So I, I, let's let's just go quickly into Bayless real, real quick. Yeah. This is another, you know. So Bayless, again, trying to find himself. Uh, it's funny, I don't have a whole lot of Pimbleton throughout this whole <laughs> this season. Like, I mean, he's been the showcase or at least one of the big talking pieces mm-hmm. of all season up to season five. But season six, you know, other than what happens at the end, there isn't really a whole lot to talk about right. with him. Uh, there are some racial issues between him and Guardy that kind of come up. But Bayless is usually the focal point of all of these seasons. Mm-hmm. Um so him and Juliana Cox begin a relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's, there's that, that happens in episode eight and then in episode nine, they break up. Okay. So they broke up. Uh, and there's a, there's a conversation between him and Pimbleton. And I might've mentioned this on the last podcast where Bayla uh, Pimbleton says, you know, at one point you were, uh, you were pretty homophobic and they're doing some kind of investigation into some, uh, like a, uh, some type of gay bar or something like that. And they bring this guy in who's like talking to Bayless. Is, he's like, I want you to tell me how nice my ass is. <laughs> tell me, tell me you love my ass. And Bayless is kind of sitting there and Pimbleton's starting like, the ne- <laughs> starting the next podcast that way. <laughs> Pimbleton's <laughs> just sitting there, right? And he's like, he's waiting for Bayless to like get up and punch this guy in the face. Doesn't happen. Okay. And because that's the way he thought Bayless was. Well, Bayless looks at the guy and says, I like your ass. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so Pimbleton's kind of surprised. But anyway, what we start to learn is that again, Bayless is exploring himself sexually as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but by episode 10, words getting around like <laughs> Baltimore, <laughs> uh, uh, we'll just say, <laughs> uh, you know, they're homicide people on the police force are talking about Bayless being a homosexual. Uh, it's getting back to people in the homicide unit. Guardy makes some comments to Pimbleton about it. Pimbleton sticks up for his partner, partner, but he's, mm-hmm. he's definitely having a time to trying to deal with what's going on and all this stuff. That's kind of all these w- rumors that are swirling around. And by episode 19, uh, detective Ballard and uh, Bayless sit down for like a dinner and he just says, yeah, I'm bisexual. I, or at okay. least he's hinting towards it. So it's interesting. It, it, I mean, this is, the year is in our of our Lord was 1997, 1998. Right. And it's not like we didn't see elements of the LGBTQ plus community represented in television in the late nineties, but it wasn't a lot. No. And and I don't even and honestly, I, I think Hollywood was not even comfortable with the concept of bi. Like right. you were either right, full dude. gay or full not gay. Right. Right. Very much. So that's and interesting. Yeah, they start this. I mean, by episode 19, which is the latter part of this season that Mm -hmm. element is definitely sticking through with the Bayless character into season seven Mm -hmm. and gets explored even more. So yeah, it's very interesting. It's a, it's a very daring way to take this character, uh, but it's a smart way to do it too. They do a really good job of uh, number one, addressing it and how it affects him on his job, which Mm -hmm. it does a lot. Uh, So, okay. All right. Let's get to the, let's get to the meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes. And that is Mahoney still haunting Kellerman, mm-hmm. Stivers, Lewis, and Falzone shows up and he is like deciding to just start digging into this. And that mm-hmm. happens throughout the whole season, dude. Okay. Like Falzone is like, hey, what happened? Hey, what happened? You're like, dude, back off. What is the deal? It's <laughs> one of your detectives. But Falzone keeps trying to get in about this Luther Mahoney shooting. Right. But then also we have Georgia Ray. Uh, which is Luther's sister, I believe. Mm. She shows up. She annoys the hell out of me. This whole thing continues with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, the Georgia Ray basically blackmailing Kellerman, saying, "Hey, I've got a videotape. My my brother had videos all over the apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had video cameras all over the apartment, and we've got you on tape shooting my brother." Um, so. Yeah, ep- I mean, I got it here. Episode seven. Falzone's really pressing Kellerman about what's going on and what happened during the shooting to where they drew they're in the halls. Like, you know how during the episode they walk up kind of like this ramp to the, Mm -hmm. to the office. 
they yeah. are in the hall. They are in that hallway, and Falzone and Kellerman are going at it to where they draw their guns on each other, right there in the middle of the hallway. And then, mm -hmm. like a couple policemen start walking by, and they put their guns away, and they're just kind of, you know, trying to shake it <laughs> off. And you know, uh, but yeah, they, yeah, they are really going at it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so the Kellerman versus Stivers and Lewis versus Falzone thing that that permeates throughout the whole season. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgia Ray Mahoney this is the big stuff. This is what happened. You know, this is what leads to this three, well, two part finale that you watched before you got on here, but Georgia Ray mm -hmm. puts, I, I don't know if you saw in the beginning, but there's, uh, I think it's Lewis and Falzone are going down the road and all of a sudden somebody like, uh, Oh, there's like shootings going on. People are trying to take out Kellerman and uh, Lewis mm -hmm. and also Stivers. So it turns out it's Georgia Ray Mahoney putting Junior Bunk uh, up to doing this. Makai Pfeiffer's character. Right. And so he's the one going around. He's he's trying to take him out. They end up arresting him. And he's like this real wimpy kind of, you know, my, my, you know, my mom put me up to it or whatever. My aunt put me up to it. So he's like this real wimp at the beginning of season six. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole tape thing, by the way, that Georgia Ray Mahoney said that she had didn't exist she was mm -hmm. just using it to get to be to make kellerman obviously worried about what was going on but you got to think about this now kellerman as an i again i really remember disliking this character i hated it watching this big soap opera that was going on with this guy but kellerman's whole arc last season was like i'm a good cop nobody could tell me different i'm going to go he goes on the stand at one mm -hmm. point and he's about ready to blow the lid He's going to blow the lid off these uh, off these people that were accusing him or right. were on the take. Right. He was going to he was going to take the arson unit down and everyone that got in his way. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm a good cop. I'm a good cop. And then Georgia Ray basically makes him a dirty cop. And pretty much. I mean, I don't recall him doing anything bad, but she's got him so under his her thumb mm -hmm. that she's possibly going to be calling in favors and he's considering it. But on during that whole time, he's trying to figure out a way to get out from under it. Um, mm -hmm. Georgia has a confrontation with Meldrick Lewis at one point. Uh, he she kicks Meldrick Lewis square in the nuts, and he gets up and punches her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that <laughs> he gets suspended. Mm. He, so he gets suspended. Uh, episode twelve and thirteen. Uh, I got. I, my notes are Lewis is taking the uh, the offense to Georgia Ray. He's on suspension, mm -hmm. but he's getting like all these files. And what you, I had this real Punisher vibe. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't like that. But Lewis is kind of like doing this vigilante stuff where he is turning a bunch of Georgia Ray Mahoney's people on each other. Okay. Uh, and there's about to be a drug war, and all of a sudden, all these lieutenants under Georgia Ray Mahoney start dying, and you're like, oh, Lewis might have a uh, might have a situation here where he's involved. And he's also not talking to Kellerman, which is driving mm -hmm. Kellerman nuts. Sure. Kellerman wants, you know, he wants to talk to his old partner. And anytime he sees him, you know, oh, there he is over at the bar. He gets up and he's gone. Um, mm -hmm. And he ain't taking it well. So he's drinking. Kellerman's drinking. At one point, he's drinking so much. He comes stumbling out of the bar. He throws his, they won't let him drive. So he takes his keys and throws them in the river. He's an idiot. Mm -hmm. An idiot. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> then Georgia Ray Mahoney says she's going to sue Kellerman. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a civil suit that's going to happen. Kellerman starts to realize that the judge may actually be bought by Georgia Ray Mahoney. So he thinks he has no chance. So he decides to go and get some dirt on the judge. And that all turns around uh, to where the, he finds out the FBI is already investigating the judge. So the judge decides to throw the suit out. So he's lucky there. He, he gets away. He, you know, he's not going to have to worry about anything there in regards mm -hmm. to that then that's probably where you come in. Um, the uh, I'm trying to look see, through my notes here just to see if there's anything else. Oh yeah. Lewis gets unsuspended. So that's why mm -hmm. in episode 22, uh, Lewis is back on the force. Makai Pfeiffer's character, junior bunk has been arrested because he killed the freaking judge that yeah, the stabbed back. him, <laughs> stabbed him dead. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop right here because we're getting into the, the, two episodes that you had seen right uh, what were your thoughts so i really like the interrogation scene with 
Mackay Pfeiffer. Oh, yeah. My only problem is that, you know, for a show that depicts realism the way that it does, there's no way he's not chained to that desk. There's no right, way that dude. desk is flippable. Right. <laughs> there was a lot of drama in that scene. It was right. weird because I was like, why isn't he cuffed? Why isn't he why isn't he bound? Why is that table free, Did free he from the ground? Just kill a judge? Should we yeah. maybe put some you're, restraints on this? You're man? a murder suspect. <laughs> so I, I'm just like thinking about the actual jail that I work in. I will not say the name on air, but I, I do work in correctional mental health. And like if you're not if you're not if you're if you're if you're behaving you you know generally speaking after you once you've been brought in from the outside you are not cuffed mm -hmm. you are able to roam about central booking you are able to roam about your dormitory unless you're you know on, locked behind the door they typically do not have to cuff and bind you unless you're a problem mm -hmm. um however if you're a murder suspect <laughs> under <laughs> just, questioning just possibly killed a judge there's no possible way you're not cuffed behind your back. Right. And it, like, I, and that's the thing. It's like, I, it, the writing of, of the two episodes, there's no way he grabs a gun and shoots the entire precinct. None. Would you, okay, unrestrained murder suspect, let's just say that happens. Okay? It doesn't, but go on. Let, let's just say that happened at one point sure. in, your, in your office. Mm -hmm. Would you get up and start flicking potato chips in the murder suspect's face? If, if I remember That's correctly, not considered appropriate <laughs> professional behavior. I wouldn't be poking the bear. Now, I think a lot of it hinges upon the fact. Now, think about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was a lot of. Uh, granted, he definitely potentially killed somebody, but there yes. was a lot of there was a lot of setup. I think Junior Bunk had uh, a situation where he was in three different episodes. And mm -hmm. he was portrayed as no threat. Right. He may have done something, but they were—he was such a, a baby about it. They were like, "Oh man, come on!" Well, you know, this guy. And that's the thing is, they think anything. they can break him because of it. They right. think like, "Oh, if we lean on him, he won't want to do the years, so he'll tell us something." And he's like, it, "You know what it reminded me of? Um, it kind of reminded me of oh gosh, what is name and dad's name? Weebay. Oh. You know where." Where at the end of season one, they're just pinning we uh, murders on Weebay, and Weebay is willing to take them <laughs> yeah. just to avoid the death penalty and get an extra sandwich and chips, <laughs> which is my favorite part of season one. Oh, He's like, man. but another tater salad is so. But is it another tater salad and soda? I'll go a few more. Uh, and they're like, this motherfucker's just taking murders just to take them. Right, right, right. Because what does he care? He's got. That's the thing, and. And I and I bring that I bring up Weebay and I bring up Mackay Pfeiffer kind of doing the same thing because Mackay Pfeiffer is like like his whole demeanor changes and he's like I'll just take the years I don't care give me the death penalty I do not care there's nothing you can do to me mm -hmm. it was very reminiscent if you want a different way of looking at it, it was reminiscent of Heath Ledger's Joker okay. where Batman is just beating him senseless and, and the Joker's like I it doesn't matter right I've already won. There's nothing you can do to stop. There's no, I, you can't bribe me. You can't reason with me. There's nothing you can do to stop me. And even if you kill me, I win. Right. And, and like Christian Bale's Batman is utter, utterly unraveled by this. When you have that level of sociopathy, when you have that level of antisocial personality disorder to where you no longer respond to consequential thinking, there is no such thing as a consequence. There's nothing that can be done to you that will change your behavior. Those are the most dangerous people on earth. Right. It really you might wanna, are. You might want to handcuff them. You might. You <laughs> might want to. You might want to use binder chains. Okay. <laughs> binder chains. <laughs> cuff, cuff. You know, behind the back mm -hmm. to the feet. Right, dude. Um. Yeah. There's. So like. David Simon, I think, ha is able to along with the, the people who wrote this, you usually are able to find that level between fantasy and reality and give you a fulfilling project. Mm -hmm. This is one of those times where I felt like it leaned too far away from the realism to where, like, we just need a big finale here. There's no way, no way he grabs a gun. And I, and, and I watched it twice, and they were like, and I'm like, wait, did he just grab a gun? <laughs> no one would have had a gun anywhere near him. Nobody. Right, right. So yeah. 
He ends up yeah. uh, so it's like putting... The, it, was, it was writing for convenience than it was mm-hmm. any kind of realism. Right. Um, real quick, before I forget, uh, you, you know, I don't know if you caught it or not, but I, I made sure to send you a text way back when I watched it. Mm-hmm. Episode 22 is Bayless and Pimbleton driving down the road and Bayless talking about, yeah, I'm, re- you know, what book are you reading there? Oh, I'm reading The Corner. Uh, he had the corner, the book, mm-hmm. the corner in right. his hand. And they're like, I think Pimbleton's like, I wonder if someday they'll make a, uh, maybe a show based on us in this unit. And I was like, oh, I, that's a <laughs> You're good so one. meta. Uh, I love it. Loved it. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the, back to the plot of what's going on. So yeah, Junior Bunk pl- put some holes. I think Ballard yeah. gets shot. Gardy gets shot. Yeah. Um, and then I can't, I, I swear there was a third person. That Dear gets old shot. Callie Thorne, my uh, heart. <laughs> right that um, was the I worst know... thing of all yeah not not since mini not since matt damon walked out on mini driver in um <laughs> <laughs> oh uh goodwill hunting goodwill hunting yeah. have i been heartbroken for a character yes oh my goodness Did I ever tell you about that my friend and i going to see goodwill hunting in the theater and we watched the scene where Matt Damon's like, I don't love you. And he walks out on Minnie Driver. And both me and my friend stood up. We're like, we love you, Minnie. Like, oh, you hear us. Yes. like you're at a Spider-Man movie or something. <laughs> uh, we just watched, me and uh, the family just watched Gross Point Blank. Minnie Driver's, I would have oh, really? never watched You've never out. seen yeah. it before? No, oh, I, Gross I've, Point Blank no actually great. I did. Yeah, I, I think I, I may have caught part of it at one point but i've never watched the whole thing until mm-hmm. about a week ago so yeah mini driver um yeah <laughs> uh, anyway. um i i feel like this is the last comment that i'll make and i'll let you move the subject matter on because we only got 20 minutes left um okay. i really do feel like they got away from the gritty realism of the show with the final two episodes and it just became about drama and you know, if you watch, there are certain shows that lean so heavily on drama that that's what you come to expect, and you know you're watching a fiction, but fiction is entertaining. With Homicide and The Wire and some of these other shows, you know, like The Shield may have been based on the Jump Out Unit or whatever it was called in Los Angeles, but The Shield was clearly a fiction, right? Um, and it was an entertaining fiction. And we all liked it because it was that Breaking Bad was a fiction. Mm-hmm. We all liked it that, you know, but we, we the, the, nobody was like, this is so like real life. No, it isn't. There were themes that were relatable and there were certainly uh, scenes, themes, actions that take place in Breaking Bad that people can relate to. But it is not gritty realism. Right, right. The yeah, homicide I'll... show is gritty realism. And when it strays away from that, it stops being a homicide. And now it's just dramatic detective show, which I did not love. Oh, well, I mean, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Uh, we, we, you got to think we're mm-hmm. we're on NBC. You know, we've got to try and get those ratings. It, up. it can only it can only be so gritty and so real. Mm-hmm. You know, it can like, only be like that. the original script. Mackay Pfeiffer just goes away for life. You know, and he's <laughs> laughing at them, and Pendleton's like shaking his fist. You're like, oh, I could have been a contender. You know, right. and NBC's like, we, this is sweet, sweet. We can't end it this way. What if he just shoots everybody? <laughs> everybody right, everybody we gotta we gotta hook some people we gotta hook yeah. people we gotta make this finale something else right and that's so, not even the season finale there's still one more no, episode to go that's the, yeah that's right i mean we we end that episode where g is like okay georgia ray done she we are taking mm-hmm. everybody out we're going to go find them we're going to get everybody we're shaking down doors this will not stand um right. so then yeah we get into the final episode and that's where you know this is where it gets interesting because the whole Luther Mahoney shooting finally comes to a head and we get a resolution to that. Mm-hmm. Um so they're they're knocking down doors, they're taking down the people, and they find out Georgia Ray Mahoney's been shot dead by our own people. Mm-hmm. Uh so that's one thing that you know, as as they're investigating that. I think Pimbleton has some dude in the back that's about ready. You know, he's got his gun on him Mm -hmm. and he draws his gun, shoots and Pimbleton hesitates. But uh, Bayless steps in front of the bullet, takes a bullet in the back. Now, prior to all that going down, you know, 
G has been told by Stivers, like, look, the Luther Mahoney shooting did not go down like it's said, like, like, uh, like it's reported. I don't think she lays it all out there, but she basically tells him, hey, there's something that's kind of hinky with all that. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know. And G is like, okay, we're going to clean up the Georgia Ray Mahoney mess. Uh, we're also going to clean up our own house. And while Bayless is laying in the hospital bed, he tells, tells Pimbleton, you need to talk to Lewis and you need to talk to Kellerman and anybody else. You need to figure out what happened. And right. wow. Now there's, I'll, I'll, okay. I don't know. You want to talk about drama. There was some drama when Kellerman goes into the box with Pimbleton. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I was like, what is going to happen? So if Pimbleton, you know, Pimbleton, Pimbleton in the box is one of my, it's like the, number one thing uh, yeah. off this show for me it's when such, a, gets somebody it's in such the fun drama because there's an arc to interrogation everyone when, when you say interrogation i think a lot of people think of abu grab ass um they think you know they think waterboarding and torture right. and right they you didn't laugh my abu grab ass i I'm trying to put it together i don't know what the hell abu grab ass is you don't Other know abu it grab sounds ass? like somebody's grabbing an ass that's about all Correct. I from that. Okay. okay. Do me a favor. While I ramble, look up Abu Ghraib. Uh, Abu. Okay. Now, Abu. I, G, yeah. Look up the Abu Ghraib. Um, uh, oh gosh. What's good? Uh, not conspiracy. The Abu Ghraib when there's a, a big problem in the world. Damn it. Um, <laughs> crisis. What am I? It wasn't a crisis. Um, it's a common enough word, and because I'm tired and been drinking, I can't think of it. <laughs> scandal? <laughs> yeah, scandal. That's the okay, one. Okay, all right. The Abu, Thank you, Abu Ghraib scandal. Okay. okay. So all anyway, right. so when people think of certain interrogation, they think of Abu Ghraib ass. Oh, and they, boy. They, they think of... <laughs> they, yeah. Are you seeing it now, buddy? Oh, boy. Yeah. Have you gotten to the girl with the thumbs up sign yet? This, I recall. I remember yeah. this. Yeah. So Abu Ghraib. Uh, colloquially known as Abu Grabas. Um, yeah, she's was... got she's got the dude on the leash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Controversy. That's the word I was looking for, actually. Okay. The Abu Grabas controversy. So, um, just real quick with that, that was where a bunch of soldiers were accused of, like, basically, like, humiliating and torturing Iraqi war prisoners. Um, it was a big, it was a big scandal, and a lot, and people, I think, rightly got punished for it. Um, and it, you know, and it does, and it does lead to a conversation about. You know when do, when does professional interrogation inter interrogation end and dehumanizing and torture begin? Where's the line? Um, which is not what we're here to discuss. But what I was getting to is when you think about all of the negative things that come from people's interpretation of interrogation, there is an art to it. Is the point? There is a professional art and technique to proper interrogation, and you look at Pembleton and you think he's just yelling at people. He's just jive talking, yelling and pointing and, you know, it's all very dramatic, but it's they go in with a with a with a set of knowledge and then they have a rhythm and a questioning that goes on to get the person to say the things that they need to say. Right. And it's pretty brilliant to watch if it's in any way, shape or form a depiction of even the slightest real life. It's cool as shit to watch. Yeah. 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 I. By the way, Wikipedia, they ain't holding back on them pictures. <laughs> you want to share your screen? Um, no, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> oh, we would get demoted to Mark and <laughs> everything else. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll get a community strike for it. <laughs> be bad. Uh, so, yeah, you know, watching Kellerman. You know, basically... Now we know what Jesse's doing when we're done here. <laughs> I do not want to go down that doom scroll at all. Like that is some bad stuff. Why were you recording so late with Mark? Or we stopped at eleven. Why are you up here at one? I was looking at grab ass pictures. Yeah, 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 all night long. Um, but I want to don't look at my background on my cell phone, man. Um, so <laughs> the uh, Kellerman in the box. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that was just you know, like I said you knew Kellerman had basically held his mental stability together with mm -hmm. bubble gum and staples and right. it, it finally coming out. He finally admits to the fact that, and what's good, what's great about it is Lewis doesn't give him up. Lewis doesn't give him up at any point. Um, mm. But Kellerman finally admits to it. And 
I think Lewis ends up going back in there after Pimbleton finally gets the confession out of him mm-hmm. uh, as th- that he shot Luther Mahoney. Um, and Kellerman's like, just do me a favor. Leave me your gun. Right. And Oh, um, my God. That. OK. I understand it was done for dramatic purposes, but I suppose maybe a cop thinks you're dumb enough to do that. Right. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, we just had a shooting in here. <laughs> like like legitimately six m- hours ago uh you know are we yeah. going to give this guy well, a gun who's well here's the thing there's are s- working in correctional mental health i can tell you there is they're very touchy-feely about uh possible suicide in law enforcement okay. if we That's if, understandable. If, if, if if a law enforcement individual is ever brought in for any kind of charges ranging from dui to like pedophilia they're they're almost immediately go on suicide watch mm. because the the likelihood of them harming themselves in the first 24 to 48 hours of incarceration is super high right so again it's just like hey why don't you leave me your why don't you leave me your gun and you know and give me a few minutes to myself it's like nobody on earth first of all Ain't what a dereliction happen. of duty that you would basically be committing manslaughter <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, again, it just goes to show you how messed mm-hmm. up Kellerman is in the head. Right. Like he thinks that somebody's going to do that. Like you're my friend. Leave me your gun, and that way I can. He wants to make. Yeah. He wants to make it all go away by doing that way. It I can shoot way. myself in the fucking face. Yeah. You know, it's Lewis, like yeah, no, no, no. Lewis is not going to go for that. So you know, no one um, is. No, no cop one. in their right mind would be like, "Here's my sidearm that I'm not supposed to give away. <laughs> Have at it, brother." <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Why don't you kill yourself? Like, yeah. I, like, I would had no idea kill what his intentions were. Like, I would know. absolutely kill myself if I were you. Here's my uh, gun. <laughs> Do us all a favor. <laughs> what happening. an idiot. Um, all right. So, so the second, so we got to wrap, wrap shortly. So really, sure. really quick, get to the big, cause we get another shooting. Don't we, we get, we, you know, this, the, the, the season finale, the 23rd episode, there's another shooting. And I think it's at, at, at the end of this, that Pendleton's like, I give up. Well, I give... Okay, yeah, go ahead. It's, it, you're right. It, so Pimbleton gets shot at and Bayless ends up mm-hmm. going in the hospital. So right. that during the whole time he's in the hospital, he's freaking out about Bayless. He's obviously mm-hmm. worried about him. And that's when G says, go interrogate Kellerman, go right. and go figure out what's going on. But I don't think we have a shooting after that, other than, you know, Kel, uh, Pimbleton comes back. Uh, to the hospital Mm -hmm. and that's where we get the long speech about i'm tired of living this lie i i don't want to do this anymore and the other thing that's interesting is that frank there's been a lot of discussion especially in season five about uh frank losing his faith in god Mm -hmm. and here's another test that keller or that well kellerman definitely puts (laughs) pimbleton to the test here uh with what's going on but you know bayless being in the hospital Pimbleton looks at, at at that as a test, and he finally turns towards God. I think towards at the end of the season, and that's when he makes the decision to quit his job. So mm-hmm. he hands in his badge to G, and he's like, "I'm done. I can't live this lie anymore." And he, I mean, I don't even know if they tell him Bayless is going to be okay. I can't remember if they even say that. But he, I mean, Pimbleton's like, "I'm done. I'm out of here." And uh, G, of course, is you know he's distraught. He's losing one of his best detectives. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the last time we see Frank Pimbleton in homicide, at least during these seasons. Wow. Okay. So Andre Brow is gone after this. Yep. That's it. All right. Well, what I, I it's unfair of me to give an assessment of season six. Um, it's, I was thinking about this, and this is the only thing I want to say, and then I'll give it to you to close us out. Okay. Um, See, homicide, I think, is a really great drama, and I and I do enjoy watching the episodes. Um, I feel like this is not the world's best bingeable show. It's a lot of repetition. the The story threads from episode to episode are okay, but because they're doing it, like, I if you if you if you were to binge watch this, ten episodes maybe to get you from soup to nuts, twenty three. I understand this was made in a non-binging era. Um, I understand that people watch this weekly with probably a break in between for a few weeks. It is not easy to get through multiple episodes in a single sitting, at least for me. I think the I think the story structure, like I don't think I could do Law and Order either for that reason. 
it's one of those where I watch an episode or two and I got to take a break. Um, the through threads are not, I feel like, compelling enough to keep you buying in episode after episode after episode the way the way modern binging structured television currently works. So Homicide's a great show. I just it, it's it's better digested in small bits than it is in bunches. And I'll give you the final word. OK. All right. Well, uh I'll disagree. Okay. <laughs> but, well, yeah, I did, I, 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 I'm watching it since you know I watched all the episodes at once. <laughs> I, I, you know, hey, I was able to get through these pretty easily. Uh, me and the wife were able to sit down. We watched these shows over. And we, we, like I said, we would easily put in three or four, maybe sometimes five at a time. I mean, that's how much of a life we don't have. Uh, but we did it. We done did it. We got these episodes watched. Uh, real quick, I want to kind of run down my favorite episodes. I uh, only got three, so it's not like it's going to be a long time here. But uh, let me share my screen here as soon as I figure it out. Uh, Mark, tell me how I share my screen. Okay, give me a second. Um, so I think I can. Right. Oh, I see it. I see it right down here. Okay. It's a little share. Yep. 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 Uh, we got to okay. go to share screen and then we are going to bring this up right here. Let me know when you can see that. And I don't know. You're good. There we got go. It. All right. So, yeah, right here is uh, Subway. And as you can see, it's uh, Frank Pimbleton, Dondre Brower, mm -hmm. and Vincent D'Onofrio's character who ends right. up running afoul of, <laughs> he gets pushed uh, into a subway, uh, basically in the, front of a subway train but he doesn't get hit head on obviously he is caught between these cars mm -hmm. and let me find my notes here real quick because i know that i wanted to talk about uh what actually happens in the well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that I'll do this off the top of my head because mm -hmm. <laughs> i want to end up screwing things up but uh, pretty much what the powerful performances between the two mm -hmm. as this man, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio's character is like, he's got like a 5% chance of living. Mm -hmm. He is possibly going to die. And Brower, who is, he's one of the least social guys uh, amongst the homicide unit, but he has to stand by this guy who's not a good guy at all. Like this guy's right. D'Onofrio's character is a jerk throughout right. most of this. And he's, you know, he's really upset, but uh, at the end of the episode, they inflate these bags, they take the cars off of them, and they pull this guy out. And then, like, within probably 15 seconds, like, all right, train's back on, and it, life just goes on as this guy is being carted away and mm -hmm. possibly dead in the back of the ambulance. And, on, uh, you know, Pendleton's just kind of standing there in awe as to, like, all this stuff that's happened, uh, these few hours that he spent with this guy and it's just like nothing nothing changed everything mm -hmm. just kept going on uh so another kind of you know another kind of step uh for pimbleton's character to get towards uh i don't know he definitely has some uh talks about faith uh with this guy and it's mm -hmm. it's, an inter it's an interesting interesting episode for sure uh d'onofrio's character knocked it out of the park it just great chemistry between the two okay. uh the next one <laughs> Okay, you did not get to see this episode. Uh, guest stars, this is Steve Allen, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I cannot remember the other the other lady's name. But okay, all right, let me pick, let me tell you what the... Uh, daggone it. All right, hold on a second. Let me pull up my notes. Because I have to tell you what the name of this episode is. There we go. All right, bear with me. All right. By the way, if you go to the shared function at the bottom of StreamYard, there's right. a, there if you there's a thing for adding slides for the next time we do this. Ah, okay, all right, there we go. We're learning things. All right, so this is episode eleven, uh, a Shaggy Dog City Goat. Okay, Juliana is <laughs> telling stories to her medical examiner friends. I love this story setup. She's sitting around. There's kind of like this convention, and she's telling them like these crazy stories. And mm -hmm. there's a story about how. They're trying to figure out if this one guy was either a suicide or a homicide. Listen mm -hmm. to this. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. So dude jumps off of a building. Mm -hmm. All right. In the course of going down to the ground, he is shot <laughs> by a shotgun blast through a window. Okay. Mm -hmm. And ends up when he hits the ground, he's dead. Mm-hmm. 
but they see that he's been shot. So the whole premise is Munch and Kellerman trying to figure out who did it. All right. Well, here's where Steve Allen's uh, character and his wife, I cannot remember her name, show up. So this husband and wife have been arguing. And one of the things that the, the husband is this abusive jerk who likes to bring out a shotgun anytime <laughs> she burns a fucking meatloaf. Oh my God. Does, like anytime, legitimately burns a meatloaf. Like, yeah, she will like, okay. So they go in there and he's like, yeah, I threaten her with the shotgun. And she's like, Oh, thank goodness. The cops are here. Oh my goodness. And, uh, she tells him like, he does this all the time. And they're like, well, why did you do this? Why did you pull the shotgun out? And he's like, well, she burnt the pot roast yesterday. And every, <laughs> I guess every time she screws up a meal, he brings out this gun and threatens the shooter, but it's always empty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he would go, ha, and, and this is, I grabbed this photo. He would pull the trigger. It would go click. And then he'd go, ah, <laughs> and laugh maniacally. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's, it's so hilarious. Well, what ends up happening mm -hmm. is that we learned the husband never loaded the gun, like I said, but right. for some reason it was loaded. And the person that loaded it was their son. Okay. Their son was upset because of something and decided, mm -hmm. you know what? I know what my parents do. My dad's crazy. He loads the gun hoping that he will shoot his own mom right. and shoot his wife. All right. Here's the kicker. There was something that upset this kid. Mm -hmm. He go the boy goes up on top of the building, and that's the guy that jumped off of the building. The guy, the father shot his own son accidentally through the window. Oh, and God. and and Juliana Cox, medical examiner Juliana Cox, ran the numbers, and this guy would have lived by hitting some awnings on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> so he would have lived. So it is a it is a homicide, and they have to bring the parents in there and show you know get an identification. They have, and what's funny is the parents have no idea. Like the mm -hmm. whole episode, they have no idea they just killed their own son. And of course, it, we go through some detective work, and it, it's just it's probably it's up there as one of my favorites for sure. And then mm -hmm. I think my third and final uh, episode that I really liked involved uh, it was called pitbull sessions this is episode 15 it involved mm -hmm. paul giamatti right uh so i don't know if you saw this episode or not uh, this was basically a man's found dead and he was mauled by some dogs uh turns out it was you sure it wasn't a cocaine bear <laughs> pretty sure okay just want to sure it was no coke bear um <laughs> So they find out this this man has been mauled by his dogs, and, mm -hmm. and the dogs end up being his grandsons. And okay. Paul Giamatti plays the grandson. Uh, these aggressive dogs were used for dog fighting, mm -hmm. and th so they bring Giamatti in, uh, Giamatti's character, into the box, and they start grilling him. And it's evident that you know Paul Giamatti's character never meant for his dad to die or for his grandfather, mm -hmm. grandfather to die. Never meant for that to happen. Um, so during the, during the interrogation though, he start he's showing like little emotion. He's not showing any type of emotion and it's baffling the detectives because you know, how, why is he like so unbothered by the fact that his grandfather's dead and it's obviously going to affect the rest of his family. Uh, they can't believe that, you know, he's, he's just not bothered by it. Mm -hmm. Uh, well then they start to bring up the fact that they're going to kill his dogs. They're going to euthanize mm -hmm. his dogs. And all of a sudden he becomes very distraught. And I grabbed a picture here of his face. Like he, you can't kill my dogs. No, I love my dogs. I love them. I, you know, he's really, really upset. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, by the end of it, even though it wasn't his intention by the end of the episode, obviously they're going to kill the dogs. And that's the one thing that breaks this guy. Like they mm -hmm. go through all this manipulation or, you know, they're, they're interrogating him, trying to get him to understand, look, this is what you did. You kill, you know, your actions led to the death of your own grandfather, mm -hmm. nothing. And then as soon as they mention the dogs, it's like, he just starts to break. He starts to break. Well, okay. there's a great conversation at the end. I can't remember if it's between, uh, Falzone and Pendleton or, or who exactly it's between. Uh, but it's, it's a conversation about like, one of them asks the other, like, are you, you know, how do you think your kid's going to grow up? Do you think they're mm -hmm. going to grow up smart? Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to grow up simple? And because Paul Giamatti's character, they looked at as just kind of stupid and kind of right. dumb and very simple minded. Um, and by the end of the conversation, what they just, what they determine is that simple wins. simple being 
blissfully ignorant and simple wins the day no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great episode. Paul Giamatti's acting is out, out of the park. Another one of the great guest stars to show up. I mean, I I run down through the guest stars here. We I talked about Steve Allen showing up. Uh, Alfrey Woodard is in an wow. episode, and she is playing off of Pimbleton in that episode. Dude, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, fantastic acting there. Uh, we get another Law and Order crossover that happens. We've got uh, oh my goodness, Peter Gallagher showing up here. Uh, Oh, Jane Meadows, by the way, played Steve Allen's really? wife. That, that, wow. Yeah, that, okay. yeah. All right. And Michael Pena. Michael Pena. That's right. The, isn't he the guy that uh, uh, he's the dude that does the Avengers or not the, the Ant, Ant Man, Man recap? Yeah. yeah Ant Man recap. John Glover shows up as a uh, spy who ends up putting a suicide vest on and walking into the homicide unit. <laughs> like um, you do. Oh, man. It's great. Mm -hmm. And then who else? Steve Burns. I know. I don't recognize the name, but I can tell you, if you click on the photo, you're going to see Blue's Clues guy. That's right. Steve Burns shows up. He's a bullied guy uh, who ends up taking uh, revenge on some basketball players. But I will say I really enjoyed season six. Uh, as far as what we've covered so far between five and six, I think five is the stronger season. Yeah, but, uh, I agree. Yeah, when we get into seven, um, no Pimbleton, man. It's kind of hard. Gonna be it's going to be weird to watch a show without Andre Brower. It really is. It's going to be tough. And I think that's mm -hmm. why it's the final season. But again, I'm going to plead with you. Please, if you watch season seven, which mm -hmm. hopefully you, you set aside. I know it's 23. Set on set another hour and a half. Aside I'm going to start for, watching it now. That's what I did. That's uh, my intention. As soon was as to I'm do done one here, I'm going to go to bed, but I'm going to put it on. <laughs> I went one episode. Uh, I, my intention was to do one episode a day. But YouTube mm. has a legit fantastic version of homicide the movie and you need to follow up the end of season seven with homicide the movie because okay. it is impactful it's powerful it's really good and you're going to see some familiar faces that you hadn't seen since uh, right. for a while so well that closes the book on this segment of from the corner to the deuce the great works of david simon homicide life on the street season six we've had a fun week so far um monday i did a double shot uh, Downton Abbey uh, with David Wright, and then a triple feature with Sean. We're really, really good show. We had a, we had a really great conversation about these porn adjacent movies. Uh, it was X, which I highly recommend. Red Rocket, which you can skip, and Boogie Nights, which is still going on. Um, and then myself and Robert Winfrey talked Firestarter, one of our shorter shows, and for us, short means ninety minutes. Uh, but we wow. also talked about other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we usually go two, two and a half hours, depending on what we're talking about and how many people there are. This was such a nothing movie. Like, this is one of those where the craft review is not very long, but we spent a lot of time in the money just to talk about other stuff. Like, we were we were lamenting, like, the death of the billion-dollar picture. That's that's <laughs> most of that show. Um, right. So the, so uh, today was the Superblog team-up. Um, so our contribution to the celebration of Image, the anniversary of Image Comics, was to compare the Image Comic term life to the movie, uh, starring Vince Vaughn and Haley Seinfeld and um, John Favreau. So uh, check that out. Uh, Jesse's going to tell you about his Superblog team up. Tomorrow, uh, we were going to review Upload. I don't have time. I, I can only get one show in tomorrow, if that. Uh, so instead, we are going to review Picard Season 2. Ooh. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, no shows over the weekend. We um, So... It's just real quick, and I don't want to belabor this because I got stuff to do now. But um, we had been listening back to shows from like two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago, we were merging with American Whammy. We are no longer doing that. We are back to being the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network part of W2M, and W2M will continue to be what it always has been. But in the in the intervening weeks, and this is the point that I'm bringing up, uh, we haven't been like updating the website, so a couple of shows got missed. We are in the verge of trying to get back. We, we got the Moon Knight show up. Um, I still have to get pages up for Money Monster, and everyone loves a bad guy for animals. And uh, we're still uh, backloading um, shows that didn't get pages from 2018 and 2019. I'm still working through those. So we, at one point, we're not going to have a website. And then the, some of the guys that contribute written re reviews were like, no, you know, we don't want to lose that. So... We still have a website, which means I have to go back to updating the thing. So uh, just, you know, for those of you who care about such things, that's what's going on there. 
But all, all of our shows are up on YouTube. All of our all the audio of our shows are on your available podcatcher. So it's really for all of you weirdos that still go to our our website for whatever the reasons are. Yes, it's 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 been it's updated this week, and we're uh, and we're catching up the stuff that we missed the, the week prior when uh, in between us not merging with American Whammy and continue in <laughs> and after we decided we were in fact going to have a website. So that's that. Jesse, real quick, do your plugs. Let's get out of here. All right. Yeah. Hey, check out the Source Material Comics podcast feed. Uh, we'll just today dropped my contribution to the super blog team up which is a discussion it's about 45 minutes a little bit less than that on darker image came out in 1993 featured the max death blow and blood wolf lots of fun there it's just me hanging out talking about my experience with image comics and what happens in the pages of you darker up. image you were on the super blog team. Uh, not the, you were on the superhero satellite as well. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Super superhero satellite podcast episode three dropped. And I got the, uh, oh man, the honor to hang out with Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, and talk about image comics as an intro to his interview with, uh, uh, Dave Olbrich, which, cool. yeah, that was a, that was very cool. Dave Olbrich, a central figure in getting image comics started. So mm -hmm. check that out. Super blog team up. Uh, we have uh, on the agenda here. We got tripped up. Trivia is going to be happening here in about a couple weeks. We're recording this coming Saturday and I'm recording a, more image goodness coming your way. It might not be with the super blog team up, but unspoken issues is recording uh, tomorrow where Chris Armstrong and myself are going to be talking all seven of the image founder books, all first issues of each one of those cool so yep gonna be a lot of fun and uh yeah next week look out for extreme justice number zero for uh, unspoken issues and that is that all right thank you folks for joining us here on tv party tonight for the great jesse starcher who without him there would have been no show tonight uh i am lowly mark rattledge be well be safe and behave <laughs>